experiments, food allergies, and cross contaminations. So our question is, can we demonstrate food allergies and cross contamination using the black box? My hypothesis says, yes, I think it will work. My materials are six apples, six knives, five cutting boards, one fork, one black light, one bottle, one bottle of glow germ, five pairs of disposable gloves. So our research is 32 million Americans have food allergies, one out of 13 kids has food allergies, and every three minutes somebody's going to the ER for anaphylaxis. Um, there's 170 foods that people have had allergic reaction to. There is top nine food allergens. Milk, eggs, peanuts, soy, wheat, tree nuts, shellfish, fish, sesame seed, which was just added. Um, a, react, a, a reaction is, um, is basically an overreaction to the immune system. Um, and as soon as you have an allergic reaction, you have to get out your EpiPen and then use it. And these are like two kind of trainers. And that one is kind of basically the same, it's just different. I'll show you how to use this one. This trainer contains no needles with black end against and our And then you go right here. And push firmly until you hear a click of his sound. And hold in place. Two, two one. one. Training complete. They usually have a needle or... This trainer may be reused. Or drugs or something, so you kind of lie around until 911 gets there. So, we did a survey on Facebook, and we asked, how many of you has food allergies? And if they has, if you do, how many of you had, in the fly, had any, any in the fly access due to cross-contamination? So, 222 of them participated, and... 157 of them said they had allergic reaction due to cross-contamination. Um, so our procedure is you lay five cutting boards out, like so. You put an apple on each one, and then you put one apple to the side. Put a knife on each one, and put one to the side next to the apple. And then you put a fork next to the number four, and this one is our control, so it has no glow germ. And this one is number two, and it's not control, so it has um, glow germ on the cutting board. So the board's not clean when you cut it. The next, well, you have to put gloves on when you do this. And then the next one is a, a knife. Like, it's, the knife is a clean, so it cross-contaminates the apple. The next one is the cutting board and the apple and the knife is clean but the fork isn't clean. This one is your hands are not washed or the apple's not washed. This one is just using a countertop and like not washing the apple. Um, so that's all of these and um, this is me doing the experiment. Um, this is also me and it's hard to to um, see, but this, this little white stuff, I think that, that's number four, um, that's like the glow germ. So, did the cross-contamination, yes or no? Definitely yes. Um, did the sterile one have any um, cross-contamination? No, because it was clean. The cutting board had cross-contamination. The knife had cross-contamination, the fork had cross-contamination, the apple and hands had cross-contamination, and the countertop had cross-contamination. So now, my conclusion. So what I've learned, so my hypothesis was right. We can demonstrate food allergies and cross-contamination using the black light. Um, glow germ is a good... Glow, glow germ and black light is a good way 
to educate on what I have learned. There is 32 million Americans have food allergies and um, every three minutes somebody is going to the ER for, for um, cross-contamination to anaphylaxis. So, um, this, the glow germ and the black light um, was a good example of food allergies and it helped me learn a lot of stuff and I hope it helped you learn a lot of stuff. This is the sterile one, the cutting board one, the knife one, the fork one, the hand one, and not that, like a comb, then the countertop. I hope you enjoyed watching my video. I hope you learned something. Kinsey Huff, signing out.